Hi, my name is Matthew Belisario. Thanks for coming by the Belisario Sonic YouTube channel from the heart of the Deep South on the outskirts of Birmingham, Alabama, where we talk about music, records, do record reviews, interviews, and much more. Stay tuned for tomorrow on Sunday. I will be uh, putting out a interview with a wonderful singer trombone player, Aubrey Logan. She was kind enough to come on the channel and talk about her upcoming album, which is a big band type album. And you will have all the information there to check out her record. But a really fun conversation with her. She talks about uh, learning how to sing jazz um, and how the new record came together. So definitely stay tuned for that. I'm really enjoying having these musicians on the channel to talk about their careers and about uh, the records that I'm reviewing. So I hope you guys are enjoying those. Today, however, we are in Alabama, of course. Just a few hours away is where a majority of this record that I'm getting ready to play for you was recorded. The exciting Wilson Pickett, the acoustic sounds, double 45 RPM, Atlantic 75th anniversary version. 180 gram vinyl, 245 RPM records, mastered by Matthew Lubins at Coherent Audio from the original analog tapes, pressed at QRP, this was recorded between May 12th um, of 1965 and May 8th of 1966. Um, the album was released in August of 1966, and this was, I think, Wilson's biggest uh, selling record. Now, Wilson Pickett was born on March 18th, 1941 in Prattville, Alabama. Um, although he really got his musical start to, so to speak, in Detroit, Michigan. Um, unfortunately, he died at the age of 64, fairly young as a result of a heart attack. And of course, he did battle with um, alcohol issues for quite some time. You know, I won't get into all that. I don't like getting into all the uh, controversial things about uh, these artists. We're here to talk about the music and celebrate the music. So he did begin singing in Baptist choirs. He was the fourth of 11 children. And eventually, in 1955, he went to live with his dad in Detroit, where he started singing with gospel groups. The Violin, the Violin Airs uh, was one of them. He then joined the Falcons, where he, that's where he started to get pretty popular and recorded a song <clears throat> with the Primettes uh, on a, on a B-side, was one of the background singers. And the song was called My Heart Belongs to You, which is from 1963. And of course, the Primettes would become the Supremes. Um, but Pickett eventually wrote a demo song, got it over to Jerry Wexler at Atlantic Records. And uh, he co-wrote a song called If You Need Me. Unfortunately, that song was stolen by Atlantic Records and given to Solomon Burke. And he actually recorded the song and it became a big hit, which obviously upset Wilson. Um, but his big... Uh, really where his big breakthrough um, was the song called It's Too Late, which was an original song that entered the charts in 1963 and peaked at number seven on the R&B chart. Um, and when that became successful, Wexler decided to buy out um, Pickett's recording contract from Double L in 1964, and that's what got him onto the Atlantic label. But his breakthrough, of course, came with his first record that was recorded in Memphis, Tennessee at the Stax. Uh, recording studio where we recorded in the midnight hour and um, that would of course change his career forever um, this album however was released in 1963 it's the third album by Pickett this album charted at number three on the U.S. Billboard R&B uh, album chart and number 21 on the popular chart becoming his biggest seller um, the majority of the record was cut just a few hours up the road here at Fame Studios in Muscle Shoals, which if you ever get a chance to visit there, it's a really cool tour. I've been there twice and really enjoyed going through and, and a lot of history there. And of course, right down the street, you've got the Muscle Shoals recording studio. So pretty cool little trip to take if you're down around that area of Florence, Alabama. All right. So that's a little bit of history. We're going to open this up. We're going to listen to this, see how it sounds. I'm pretty excited about this. Again, this Atlantic uh, 75th Acoustic Sound Series has been a great series. I'm glad I'm subscribed to it. 
and all but like two records I really, really enjoy. So it has a great spectrum of music. And of course, this is pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys have the first look, cracking this open. And there's your gate bowl with the pictures. Nice thick jacket as always. These tip-on jackets. Nice pictures. Yeah, this is just, I mean, they just do such a good job. Yeah, they're 60 bucks, but it's 245 RPM records, and you don't get any better pressings, in my opinion, or packaging with a record. So, you know, if you're not subscribed to it, pick out the ones you really want. They're well worth picking up. So it comes with your little uh, advertisement there and then your Atlantic 75th insert. And then, of course, the uh, records come in the QRP anti-static sleeves. So we're going to go ahead and take this out and give it a quick wipe off with some distilled water. And we're going to drop it on the turntable and let you guys have a listen. And I'll give you my reaction as to how it sounds. I do not have any other copy of this. So um, this is going to be really cool to hear this on record. So you got 12 tracks on here. Um, majority recorded right up the street a few hours in Florence, Muscle Shoals. Um, and then you've got um, 12. The re remaining uh, were recorded in Memphis, Tennessee at three different dates. And I think that's, um, you know, like five or six of the tracks. You do have some interesting players on here. Of course, from Muscle Shoals, you've got those classic guys donald duck dunn playing the bass guitar and steve cropper on uh on the uh, guitar and then you've got of course spooner oldman is playing on the record um all those shoals musicians that were just so well known if you haven't seen that documentary on uh, muscle shoals you got to check that out it's really good um all right, and then Isaac Hayes is even playing on one uh, some of these tunes as well. All right, so let's drop this on and let's listen to side one, Land of a Thousand Dances. Let's see how this record sounds. Appreciate you guys hanging out, listening to these with me, and leaving your comments, giving the thumbs One, up. Two, three. One, two, three. Oh. Now that's what happens when you play a 45 RPM record at 33. So uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just gonna. That's yeah. So um, you don't want to do that. Uh, like what in the world? All right, now we are at 45 RPM, like we're supposed to be, and Wilson won't sound like he's. One, two, three. One, two, three. Of course, this would be one of his big hits here.
Alright, so let me give you a bit of my assessment here. So, I'll say right off the bat, this is not the best sounding recording I've, I've heard. Um, and it, it may be just the way it was recorded, but like the bass to me has a, almost a distorted sound to it um, on, that, on that track anyway. See how it sounds on this one. Just the low end on it kind of had a weird distortion to it. Let's see how this sounds. That's really good. Something you got. Horn sound nice. The bass sounds pretty decent on this. I'm gonna put on that first track again because the this second track, these are both recorded at Muscle Shoals. Tracks one, two, four through six, and twelve. All those were recorded at the Shoals. Uh, this track here, the bass sounds much more natural, full. But that the first song sounds distorted or something to me. So I'm going to replay it again because I, you know, want to do a fair review on these. And I listen to all these at the same volume, all exactly. Everything is set the same. So one, two, three. See, I can, you can hear that distortion right there. like almost an overdriven bass and maybe that's what they were trying to get but even the drums have like a weird So I think this track, I don't know what's going on here, but to me, it sounds like on the low end, there's a lot of rumble, like a lot of dis uh, distortion. So let me know, leave your comments on this and let me know what you guys think. Even if you've heard about a different recording. of low end distortion on this that that's on this next track it doesn't seem to be there this sounds really nice here Nice, really warm, nice full bass. 
sound nice. singles on here in the midnight hour um you got uh six three four five seven eight nine which is the next track 99 and a half won't do and landed a thousand dances those are the four big um hits on this record what i'm gonna do is let this song play and i'm gonna let uh the third song play because it's recorded at a, in memphis i think um track three so we'll see how that sounds in comparison to this. Again, the first track, uh, Land of a Thousand Dances, it has a weird low-end distortion. This does not have it. This is recorded at the Shoals, too. Something you got. This sounds really nice here. out of Blue Ants, RT85 with the Ortofon Blue cartridge going through a shit money preamp into Yamaha HS8 speakers. And I don't get any distortion on any other recordings. So I listen to the, uh, a lot of different types of music in here. So this is... You can tell it's got a little bit different sound. A little bit of brighter sound. But no distortion, it sounds pretty good. Voice sounds fantastic. really good too i'm gonna put on the i'm gonna put uh in the midnight hour on we'll have a listen to that a couple more tunes and just see how they sound again i don't know what's going on with that first track but it de definitely it, it doesn't sound right to me so that's my assessment you guys leave your comments let me know if you've got an original copy if you hear any kind of a distortion on that um just a low end does not sound good to me on that on the just on the one track so i'm gonna go ahead and put on in the midnight hour and then i'll flip it over and play i'm drifting and we'll see how these couple of tunes sound again i appreciate you guys hanging out and supporting the channel and um all right very quiet vinyl flat vinyl This again was recorded at a different studio in 1965 in Memphis. And this would be first. 
released on the In Midnight Hour album, In the Midnight Hour album in 65. Uh, it does sound different, you can tell. Sounds really nice on this. Um, to me, the drums sound a little muffled. Um, they don't. There's not a lot of resonance off the drums. Just how they recorded. Horns sound decent. So, yeah, it sounds good. You know, I, I, more and more, you know, listening to these, listening to rock music or pop music, rhythm and blues, the way the drums are recorded makes a huge difference to the whole sound of the, of the recording. And when the when the drums are muted sounding, it, it just it gives kind of a, a muffled sound to everything, in my opinion. So to me, it's just not the best recording. It sounds good. The mix is good. I, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over, and we're gonna play a tune off the other side. Um, the, you can tell the difference between what was recorded at the Shoals. And what wasn't, you can definitely tell that. They do sound different. And you, that's something that I would expect. You're not going to be able to take um, recordings from different places and different dates and make them all sound the exact same. I mean... has the same type of sound um uh, it doesn't have this is not a shoals recording here this is recorded december 65 in memphis you can tell it doesn't have the same sound as the shoals recordings it's very apparent so it sounds very similar to the last track Overall assessment, this is definitely not um, the best sounding recordings I've, I've heard. Um, to be honest, it's a little disappointing for me. Um, I don't regret having it. I, I, I really like this music. I like this, you know, the songs on here. I just don't think that these were, were recorded that well. That's just my, my opinion. assessment on the Wilson Pickett so you know that's I'm gonna do honest reviews on here and tell you what we tell you guys what I think if, I, if I'm a little disappointed in something I'll tell you and I just think that uh, there's definitely some distortion or something going on on the first track Land of a Thousand Dances the other tracks that we heard that were recorded at the Shoals sounded very good and then the other ones that had come from Memphis recordings, the the me, the drums sound a bit muted. It doesn't have as much resonance on the tracks. They're not as warm. Um, so that's just, that's how it is. All right. Well, thanks for joining me, folks. And we will see you on the next video. Take care. Happy listening. Let me know what you think.